Welcome to this course on Ancient Roman Civilization. Maybe you could call it Ancient Rome 101. How much can we do in 12 sections of 25 minutes each, less than six hours? Well, not much, I fear, but as much as we can, I hope. And what I'm hoping is that at the end of this roughly six hours that, you'll, that we will spend together, you'll have a better sense of where ancient Rome sat in place and time, what came before, during, and after, and where did Rome grow and contract over the space of that time in the world that was known, the known world, of around a thousand years before the BC AD line and for about 500 years after that. Now, before we begin, I want to talk about time, and that is that as much as possible, I'm going to try to say BCE and CE before the Common Era and the Common Era. And I'm going to try to do that because BCE and BC are equivalents, BC standing for before Christ. And A.D. Anno Domini in the year of the Lord, the Lord there being Christ, in that formulation corresponds to C.E. I was raised in a B.C. A.D. world, and I try to use B.C.E. and C.E. And if I slip up, I mean nothing by it, because of course some folks say that the B.C. A.D. has a very Christian, um, almost imperialistic way of looking at time, and, and I mean nothing by it, but these are the kind of standard ways we have of looking at time. So we're going to do about 1,500 years in this course, which is um, a bit uh, ambitious, but we'll see what we can do. Whenever I teach a course, I ask people to look at the beginning and the end, and to look at the end from the beginning and the beginning at the end. That is, I don't like courses that just run out because time runs out. I want you to ask yourself, where am I right now? When I think of ancient Rome, I think dot, dot, dot. What nouns and what verbs and what images come to mind? Maybe snapshots in your mind if you've been to the city of Rome, or if you've traveled throughout Europe, North Africa, even um, the modern Middle East, you will have seen vestiges of Roman architecture because Rome reached all of those areas. Maybe you've been as high as Hadrian's Wall, the traditional line between Britain and Scotland. Have you seen some movies? Maybe a TV series, read historical fiction? Maybe you've seen Roman sculptures in museums. Maybe you've seen a Renaissance painting about Julius Caesar, an example of one historical period thinking of another historical period. And when you have those nouns and verbs and images in mind, those become your preconceptions. And I would like you to revisit those preconceptions at the end of the course to see that the distance that you've traveled. Now, my goals in this ambitious six hours, maybe I should call them modest, ironically. I'd like you, when you leave, to be historically literate. That is, you know, there are some people who have a line in the sand. I know one person who always asks, you look at a piece of art or read an historical uh, novel, and this person always says, is this before or after Columbus? The line in the sand for my wife is 1492. And so she puts things before or after 1492. So I want you to be able to put things in the major periods of Roman history, which we're going to break down in a few minutes. Know who the major people were, the major ideas. I happen to be an historian of ideas, technically speaking, what's called an intellectual historian. I'm interested in how Romans thought, and of course, the major events. Though, I'd like you to know what came first and what came second, but I am not the kind of person who teaches history as, to use the famous expression, one damn thing after another. This happened and that happened and that happened. I tell my students that they need to know that Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad never sat down together because they're separated by centuries, even over a millennia. But 